Is it my turn? Blake, do you have a, a, a four? Four? Hey, we're playing draw poker. Fred, give me three cards. No, 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 Blake, Blake, we're not playing draw poker. We're playing crazy eights. Uh, uh, Jenny, um, it's spades. No, I, I'm collecting clubs because we're playing spoons. Hey, okay, give me all your clubs. We're not playing spoons. We're playing dice. Hey, Wooly, blow on these for me. We're not blowing on those. We're playing strip poker. And you know what? I got nothing. So we'll just get rid of this. Oh, uh, hey, put the cards down, guys. Hey, hey, everyone. We're Jester's Comedy Improv. And we're live here on Facebook. Uh, we're starting off uh, Torque Brewery's Unfair Week because this is the day that that big Minnesota get together thing was supposed to start and we can't do it. So we're all stuck in our homes here to tell you, a sh give you a show. Uh, um, again, my name is Wooly. Uh, we've got Fred, we've got Mary Kay, we've got Jenny, we've got Bill, we've got Blake. Uh, I probably pointed in completely wrong way. So I apologize, but we're all here to bring you a live improv show from the comfort and safety of our own homes. Um, like I said, Torque Brewery is doing this as part of their big unfair week event. Uh, make sure you uh, grab your favorite Torque Brew and uh, enjoy the show. If you can't do it today, they've got curbside pickups pretty much whenever. Um, so you can get that from there. And if you live within the Spring Lake Park area, they uh, <laughs> deliver to you as well. Bless you, Fred. Um, no one else is gonna know this, but that was at least a very manly sounding sneeze, Bill. Um, I really hope Bill will sneeze at some point during the show. Um, we don't, we, keep, we can't make a sneeze happen, but we can make laughter happen based on your suggestions. Damn it, Fred. You had half an hour to get all of your sneezes out before we started. Did you pull the hat out of storage or what happened? I, I think I'm just going to leave the screen. I'm, okay. Yeah. Fred's going to leave. I'm going to make the four of you uh, sing a song for uh, uh, people out here. And you know what? I've got my little buddy right here. Come on in. This is Edison, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, I want you guys to sing a song for Edison. Edison is going into the third grade this year. So, uh, Blake, we're going to start with you. I'd like to hear a song about Edison going to third grade. Edison is going to third grade. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. He likes to drink his favorite drink, Kool Aid. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Go go, sip sip. Go go, sip sip. This kid is really hip. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Edison! That was Edison, everyone. And now we've got uh, uh, the chat going. Make sure you go into that chat. I tr trust me. This is going to be the one comment section on Facebook you're actually going to want to go into right now because we have a lot of fun in there. Uh, I see Diane went to New York this summer. That sounds really cool because I didn't go any farther than St. Paul this summer. Jenny, let's hear you start a song for Diane about New York. Diane's really hungry. She ate a big apple. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. She got thirsty, so she drank down her snapple. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. She doesn't mind having to fly. She doesn't mind having to fly. Saw the Statue of Liberty and said, oh my. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Ah. Diane! 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 Yeah. <laughs> I had one. Um, oh, here's, a <laughs> other, here's a couple other good ones. Uh, uh, Bruce, J uh, Mary Kay, Bruce went to Winona, Winona, Minnesota. So think about everything you know about that great city on the Minnesota Wisconsin border called Winona. And let's hear about Bruce's trip to Winona. Bruce is anything if not dull. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. He went to the river and rode in a skull. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Row, row, fast, fast. Row, row, fast, fast. Good thing he broke his mask. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. 
Bruce! Bruce, I actually think I still have a uh, warrant out for my arrest in Winona. Um, kind of a true story there. Uh, let's do one more song. Uh, my buddy Matt here says that this summer he thinks he's had enough time to view the entirety of the internet. So Bill, we're going to start with you singing about Matt viewing everything that's on the internet. Matt has served the entire World Wide Web. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. If you started, he read the whole thread. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Browse, browse, click, click. Browse, browse, click, click. Oops, I have to delete my history quick. Do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Matt. Matt. <laughs> That's even funnier because I think that Matt is married to Jenny. <laughs> Come on back. Um, no one knows exactly what's going to happen from here on out in the world, except apparently Fred, who is the wizard of, uh, uh, we'll call him the wizard of jesters. Everyone else, though, has these strong prognosticator skills that we want to tap into right now because we want to tell everyone out there in Facebook world about the future, or should I say, the future? We're gonna play a game we call In the Future. Uh, people are loading up our Facebook right now with stuff they would like to know about in the future. So let's take a look uh, from Heather and tell people about Facebook in the future. In the future? People will actually be able to see Facebook on each other's face and like by pressing their nose. You don't want to know how they will unlike stuff. In the future, Facebook will only show you the information from people you hate. In the future, it'll be known as Facebook Netflix show. In the, in the future, future, you sign up by Facebook by uploading your DNA. In the future, Facebook will skip the middle step and just have people unfriend each other. <laughs> Diane wants to hear about electric toothbrushes in the future. In the future, there'll be Tesla toothbrushes. In the future, from lack of exercise, all children will have clean teeth but scrawny arms. Extra, extra, read all about it. In the future, all electric toothbrushes will be solar powered and totally useless in the morning and the evening. <laughs> in the future, electric toothbrushes will clean your teeth from across the room supersonically. In the future, electric toothbrushes will debut their follow-up, electric loofahs. You take that in the shower with you, Bill? Yes. The electric, the electric loofah? <laughs> I will tell... product test that. <laughs> Very millennial of you, Mary Kay. Let's tell Heather about state fairs in the future. In the future, 4-H contests regarding the world's largest cucumbers, watermelons, and potatoes will have two different entry forms. One for GMOs and one for nuclear mutants. In the future, state fairs will only admit the palest skinned people in the state. In the future, the animals will no longer be weighed because of pig positivity. In the future, to accommodate all his fans, Weird Al Yankovic will be the only act all two weeks. In the future, the only way to buy State Fair tickets will be by the stick. In 
the future, butter will be banned, and all sculptures will be made of, I can't believe it's not butter. In the future, even though radio will be dead, there will still be booths of two middle-aged guys screaming through glass. All right, this one's going to be a little bit of a mind bend, but uh, Micah would like to hear about time travel in the future. In the, in the future, time travel is not that big a deal. I'm just telling you. Extra, extra, read all about it. In the future, time travel will really screw up the past. Time travel was yesterday. <laughs> hey, we're gonna, no, 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 Fred. We're, we're, I will travel black in time and accidentally kill my grandfather. <laughs> There we go, everyone. There's everything you'll want to know about in the future. Uh, Fred and Mary Kay can hang out. Blake, Bill, and Jenny can kill the cameras and uh, run to the bathroom if you need to. Uh, Fred and Mary Kay, before I go on to this, I want to remind everyone in the chat, watch for some links because one of our tech people, Rebecca, is going to be loading it up with some fun links that you're going to be able to uh, click on. And one of the more important ones is coffee.com. That's kind of our online tip jar. If you like what Mary Kay, what Fred, myself, Jenny, Bill, Blake are doing, and you want to show your appreciation, go ahead and drop a couple bucks in coffee, which is ko-fi.com. Um, just to get you in a little bit of a secret, uh, when we get enough uh, tips in there, we've been uh, uh, kind of passing on, uh, paying it forward to some of our local food shelves. So uh, you're helping us, you're helping the local food shelves when you do that. Um, Mary Kay and Fred, though, are going to play a game called New Choice. And with this game, I have a magic bell here. And every time they say or do something that I want to don't like, uh, I want to mess with them, I want to uh, see their minds blow and go in a different direction, I'm going to hit the bell. And they're going to have to immediately change what they just said or did. And... Uh, uh, I'm going to pull this one from uh, Gina. Fred and Mary Kay, you are looking and competing for the world's largest gratuity. So the world's largest tip. Whatever business you two want to be in to go after the world's largest tip is up to you. But that's what you're looking for. And again, means you've got to change what you just said or did. Hey, listen, Mary Kay. I seated this rich couple. They're my table. It is a, a joint responsibility to serve these customers. And you just never know because maybe they got rich by penny pinching. You just never. And you just never know because maybe they're my parents. You know, your parents give you enough money. I have to make ends meet at this job and I live in a cheap apartment. I, I live in a cardboard box under the freeway. That does not I really live with a couple of crack addicts. That sounds really terrible, but that's not my problem. I have that sounds really terrible, and I would like to move in with you. I've had it too good all my life, and I just need need some experience. I need some experiences of life. Well, wait a minute. I, I like this plan. We could switch places. You, you could live with the crack addicts, and I, I could move into your apartment. Well, it's more of, of a three-bedroom house, but whatever. Um, I think that we could try it for a week. Uh, I, you know what? I really think you won't be able to get, you know, down and dirty uh, for at least a month. Okay, let's uh, split the difference and say one day. Well, you know what? I haven't showered in a long time. 
So uh, yeah, one day is good for me. Uh, give me your keys, please. I was just thinking, now that we're talking about this, why don't you just move in with me? I've got these two extra, I'm not saying any, I'm not, I'm not, I've just got these extra bedrooms, extra bedrooms. Uh, Mary Kay, I, I. I don't think the bell's coming through. It wasn't, no. Which one did you bell us? Every single one after some point because it just wasn't coming through. <sighs> but I wanted to know if I was going to get any. That's my fault. That's my fault. That's the bell's fault. That's the computer's fault. I'll blame Zoom. Oh. Uh, I'll just blame everyone but you guys because Mary Kay and Fred, you guys were wonderful. <laughs> um, Mary Kay, I'm going to let you go ahead and kill your camera. Uh, everyone else come back though. Jenny, Bill, Blake. Uh, Blake's only coming back though because we're going to say goodbye to him and Blake's getting out of here. Blake's going into uh, uh, a little breakaway room because we're going to play a guessing game and Blake cannot know what he's guessing. So Blake's gone. We can say whatever we want about him. Blake's gone and he is our contestant on today's dating game. Ba -ba 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 -da -da. Blake is going to have to guess who these three contestants are who are playing for his hand, his heart, his affection. Um, Fred, you are Dolly Madison, whom I only know, unfortunately, as the first lady for James Madison. So hopefully your Dolly Madison uh, trivia is up a little farther than mine. Uh, so you're bachelor number one. Jenny, you are bachelor number two and you are Donatello of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, again, I know that he's the one who wears purple and has a stick uh, and is the smart one. And uh, <laughs> Bill, you are a rotary phone. <laughs> I don't actually know if you're even old enough to have seen one of those in action, Bill, but... Uh, can we repeat our suggestions beginning with you, Fred? I am Dolly Madison. I am Donatello, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. And I am a rotary phone. All right, ladies a and gentlemen. A rotary club. A rotary phone. A rotary yes, phone. Yes, I've seen these. Okay, good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jester's Dating Game. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I tried doing that last time. It didn't work either then. We have our three bachelors here who are going to try to win the hand of our contestants. So please welcome back to the stage your contestant today, Blake Wanger. Blake, welcome to the Jester's Dating Game. How are you doing today? I'm great. Good. Go ahead and introduce yourself. <clears throat> All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Blake. I'm a Libra. I enjoy good books and, and cute animals. And I'm excited to meet all of you. All right. So, yep. Go ahead and uh, begin with bachelor number one and then right. go from there. Uh, bachelor number one. Um, I'm an introvert, so I spend a lot of time at home. So I'm wondering, uh, what is your favorite board game? Oh my. Well, we don't really have any of these board games that you speak of. But when I entertain in the executive mansion, oh, sometimes we, we sip tea and we speak gossip of our husbands. OK. Uh, uh, bachelor number two, same question. Favorite board game. Uh, what is my favorite board game? Well, there's definitely been a monopoly made about me and my brothers. That's for sure. So probably that one. but. You know, anything kind of four player. Those are my kind of go-tos. All right, and a bachelor number three, what is your favorite board game? Well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Candyland looks fun. When, when, I, when I see my family play it on a, on a table, um, they look like they're having fun. They also enjoy Monopoly. Uh, is is a... You know, one of the characters is it's kind of shaped after me, so I'm particularly partial to that game. 
Okay. Um, all right, another question uh, for all three of you. Uh, now, unfortunately, this year, uh, we we here have just kind of a virtual drive-through state fair. But if you and I were to go to the actual state fair, uh, bachelor number one, what's the one exhibit that you would definitely not want to miss? Well, if you partook of holiday specials in the 1970s and 1980s, you might have seen a line of sweet cakes with my name on them. And they were quite delicious and much better than those, those hostess ones. So I would say a sweet cakes. And um, some people think I invented ice cream. Hmm. Bachelor number two, same question. Well, first of all, we're going to get pizza, okay? I just need you to be clear that the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna eat some pizza. Uh, and then I'm probably, you know, I'm pretty young, so I'm gonna eat more pizza later. Um, but, you know, my other favorite exhibit, I really like the rodent it, um, house. That's kind of fun. Okay, and batch number three, same question. What? Sure, I don't remember. I'm getting on in, in years. I can't remember what the question was. Uh, if we were to go to the State Fair, what's the one exhibit or place that we would have to go at State Fair? Oh, quit your Jimmy Jack and Sean. You know I can't leave the house. I'm getting on in years. All right. I'm stuck to the wall. Okay. Um... Well, you've got time for one more question, and uh, today's prize is a date to the location of choice from your bachelors. All right. Um, I better make this a good a good question then uh, for all of you. But this this time we'll start with bachelor number three. What is your philosophy of life? My philosophy of life is that. Uh, for everything, everything's cyclical. It all kind of turns and spins and comes back to where it started. You know, you, 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 you put your finger in the ring thingy and then you twist it around and uh, well, eventually everything comes back to where it started. And, uh, and yeah, I think people are like that too. Okay, fascinating, very deep. Bachelor number two, your life philosophy. Oh, uh be the good guys. You gotta fight the bad guys, get rid of them, and then just go eat pizza with your three other brothers. All right. Sounds like a, a good life. And bachelor number one, your life philosophy. I understand that there's a, a quite a strong movement for women's rights in this day and age, but in my time, a woman knew what it was to be a woman and she could still be strong. For instance, when my husband and James uh, had the, the White House invaded, uh, I stayed behind and I saved the portrait of George Washington. Now, is that something a weak person would do? I don't think so, but I could still entertain. Very Mike, good. It's, uh, it's time for you to make your decision, but first tell us which two bachelors you will not be choosing. All right. Uh, well, um, you know, as much as I am an introvert, uh, I do like to leave the house once in a while. And I, I fear that bachelor number three will never leave the house being a grandfather clock. Ooh. Or father no, no, no. He, he oh, didn't talk about it. Can a grandfather clock communicate with someone outside the house? Not necessarily. That doesn't ring an Alexander Graham bell for you? Ah, telephone. What kind of telephone? Your whippersnapper? An old fashioned rotary telephone. That's right. There we go. Bachelor number three is a rotary phone. Blake, right. who is your second rejection? Um. Oh, I hate to do this because I, I'm so very fond of this person and their three brothers, uh, but I, I'm not going to go on a date with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Which one? Take uh, a look at her hair. That would be Donatello. That is correct. Donatello, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, yeah. which means you are choosing bachelor number one, who is, of yes. course, 
And all I can say to that is, hello, Dolly Madison. Dolly Madison, that is correct. Congratulations, Blake, and congratulations, Dolly Madison. I'll be sure to cover for you so James never knows you've left the house. I am bursting with pride. That is the dating game. Mary Kay, come on back. Can we give a quick round of applause to Fred there for knowing way, way more than I ever knew about Dolly Madison? That is amazing, Fred. Do you have your phone out on Wikipedia? Or? No, no. Our, our cat is named James Madison. <laughs> so we, we just happen to know an ungodly amount of information about the Madison family. I didn't, I didn't know you had to research who your dog was named after a cat. Congratulations, Fred. And congratulations again, Mary Kay. Uh, I mean, congratulations, Mary Kay, you're back. I always get Mary Kay and Blake confused. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the dating game has inspired me. And hopefully it's inspired all of you. We want to tell you about love. We want to tell you how things in the house, things around you, uh, uh, we're actually going to compare this to some presents, good and bad, people have received over the years in a game we call Love is Like. And looking at the chat on Facebook, let's start with Love is Like Frog Legs. Love ah. like frog legs. There, it's only good in France. Love is like frog legs. It feels really weird at first, but then it's wonderful. Love is like frog legs. Sometimes it bends the wrong way. Love, love is like frog legs. Sometimes you just want to get in there and be a little piggy. Yeah, it's a Miss Piggy and Kermit joke. Mary Kay, I see you were confused a little bit there. Um, Love is like frog legs. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Accurate, Bill. Um, Annie once received a 50 pack of scrunchies. So let's say Love is like scrunchies. Love is like scrunchies. And I'll leave you saying goodie. Love is like scrunchies. Here today, gone tomorrow. Love is like scrunchies. Sometimes you just want to reach out and grab their bun. <laughs> Love is like scrunchies. Uh, if, if she doesn't have one, you can borrow her mom's. Love is like scrunchies. Sometimes you just want to be tied down. Love is like scrunchies. If they're too tight, your wrist might hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a used car. Love is like a used car. Love is like a used car. You don't know if you've got a good one until you drive them around for a while. Love is like a used car. Make sure you look under the hood. Love is like a used car. You can keep a record of it in your little blue book. Love is like a used car. If you can't afford a high-end model, a cheap one will still get you there. Love is like a used car. Sometimes when you get lemons, like lemonade. <laughs> Let's, hmm, a uh, doorknob. Love is like a doorknob. Love is like a doorknob. Make sure you disinfect before you use it. Love is like a doorknob. You got to get in there if you want to pick the right one. Love is like a doorknob. You want to be really careful if there's a sock on it. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, let's do a, uh, uh, you know what? I got, uh, we got two dog suggestions in here. So you can either do love is like a poodle or love is like a pug or just love is like a dog. You've got three options there. Love is like a puggle, kind of cute and kind of ugly. Love is like a pug. You know you got a good one if it's breathing heavy. Love is like a poodle. If you don't brush it enough, the hair gets all matted. Love is like a poodle. It is only good if it is real French. Love is like a dog. Sometimes it just won't come. I think we're going to stop there. Congratulations, Fred. Uh, Fred, you can uh, uh, kill your camera if you want. Uh, so can Jenny. Both of you can take a break. Uh, Bill and Blake, you should have a pile of books, each of you. Uh, grab those real quick. Um, while you're doing that, um, Mary Kay, you're going to be the only one without a book. And the <laughs> holy crap. Uh, uh, I need to pull this suggestion up because, wow. Um, in this scene, uh, Mary Kay, you are investigating the murder of a nun. You can, you can thank Heather for that. Um, Bill, there's one book whose spine I cannot read because there's no words on it. That second black one from the top, that's the one you get to use. And uh, uh, the educational psychology that sounds like a page turner blade you're going to use that book so mary Kay gets to say whatever she wants while she's investigating the murder of a nun blake and bill can only take from these books so they're going to be able to just flip them over at any point uh look at any page and that's exactly what they have to read right then and there so mary Kay, let's begin this murder investigation of a nun Oh my gosh, another, another murder at the Abbey. Sister Abigail was my closest friend. This is not necessarily true. I have so many close friends. We're going to just say, to respect to the dead, that Sister Abigail was my closest friend. A little something for your journey, Mikhail Fedorovich. Well, Mikhail is not allowed in certain places in the Abbey. It's only for the sisters. But if he can help us figure this out, Abigail would thank him. How many telephone numbers can you remember for a month? For a month? Do I, do I, do I hope that I will not have to remember them for a month. I hope that we get this done so much quicker. Like maybe even right now, maybe today, maybe Abigail can be put to rest today. Tell me though, is that thing pulling its weight? He's trying his best. You just, you just don't offend our helpers. The association between silver and electrical conductivity is not arbitrary. Oh, goodness. Because, because the silver was disrupted in its place. The, the chalice and the trays were not where they should have been. That is an excellent clue. Maybe it was part of a robbery. How did he spend the ensuing minutes? How did he even spend them? Well, it, 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 maybe he was startled because he didn't take the silver with him. And I know we're assuming that this murderer is a man, but it could have been anyone. At this remark, the door was open to admit a middle-aged woman looking bewildered and frightened. Yes. Oh my goodness. I would not. Oh my goodness. So taking the book, she asked, in what condition is the interior of the globe? You 
are not to be asking the questions, mother. You are to be answering the questions. Like, why did you move the silver? And why does Abigail have a dent of a candlestick in her head? Gently, almost in disbelief, the Count reached out to lay a hand on one and found it to be soft and warm. You're going down for the count, mother. You cannot just use your position to get away with literally murder. It is thought that most well-developed schemata are organized in hierarchies similar to outlines. Hierarchies. I am so doggone sick of hierarchies. You got the Pope, you got the Cardinals, and all the men, and then you got the mother, and then you got the sisters, and I'm over it. Let me tell you. She is in the ballroom with Victor, I believe. <laughs> Father Victor, he's probably in on the whole thing. I don't like the way he looks. I've never liked him. College students were taught information about baseball and music. I was not allowed to go to college. I am self-taught. It's just good that I have an instinct for finding things out. They were both quiet now. Then, looking about him, the Count gestured with his hand. Mother and Father Victor, who is a Count, he will never let you forget that. They have just stopped answering questions, and that is not acceptable. I'm calling the police any minute. Self-questioning strategies are particularly effective. Oh, oh, so we put them in a room together and let them, and we take them and we let them ask each other questions and then they reveal everything. I suppose a room is the summation of all that has happened inside it. Yes, because you have it on camera and then they cannot get away. You got it for the trial. For whom am I writing? You, for the, I guess the judge. Uh, or a jury, maybe there'll be a jury. A round of applause, everyone. Bill and Blake for reading so well and Mary Kay justifying every stupid thing they pulled out of educational psychiatry and apparently Bill's little black book. What was that book, Bill? In case people uh, a gentleman in Moscow. Gentleman gen in? A gentleman in Moscow, yeah. Gentleman in Moscow. I saw that late at night on Cinemax once. Uh, Bill and Blake, you can go ahead and kill your cameras. Fred and Jenny are going to join us again. Um, Fred, Jenny, and Mary Kay are, uh, I don't want to brag. I'll brag once Bill kills his camera. Get out of here, Bill. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Bill's leaving because Mary Kay, Jenny, and Fred have been working together um, for a long time. And they're basically experts when they put the three of their heads together. They're basically experts at everything. And we've got a load of questions coming up in the Facebook chat that need answers. So reminder, use that Facebook chat. Uh, we're asking for comments, for suggestions on there. We're pulling them up. Um, we're also putting some links in there. So I'm going to throw this out one more time, coffee.com, ko-fi.com. Uh, if you're liking what you're seeing, go ahead and drop us a couple bucks in there. Uh, we like to split that up between us, the players, as well as uh, uh, local food shelves or whoever might be needing that money. So you're helping a lot of people out if you do that. Um, uh, let's jump into these questions, though. We're going to go uh, uh, Fred, Jenny, Mary Kay with this. One, two, three. And Fred, to start with you, with our instant expert, someone in our chat wants to know, um, how to reduce neck wrinkles. To reduce neck wrinkles, you stretch lemons across your corroded arteries and press. There you go. You just press, you uh, peel some lemons, stretch them out, put them over your carotid artery and press. Um, thank you guys very much. Hopefully that helps. Uh, another question in here. This is just a very general, vague asking for advice, uh, but we'll start with Jenny. Can you give uh, Annie some, advo uh, sorry, some advice with her boy problems? 
boys are very dumb. So speak kindly and use small words. There you go. When you're dealing with your boy problems, just talk to him like a kind old grandma and use really small one syllable, maybe two syllable words if you can. Um, we've got another question here. Up, what, what's a syllable? We'll, we'll explain that later. Um, we have a uh, kind of a more technical question in here from PK. Um, how can you make your smartphone project on your smart TV, Mary Kay? You make your phone project on your TV with a device that costs thousands of dollars by 20 of them because they break easily so there you go if you really need to project your smartphone to your smart tv it's going to cost you a couple twenty thousand dollars so uh do with that what you need to uh bruce wants to know Jer uh, fred is it funnier to speak in gibberish or to use mime hmm. it is funnier to in mime. There you go. It's funny. You're just to speak in mime. And uh, uh, we got, uh, you know, we're going to do one or two more in here. The first one I see in here, Jenny, how do you get rid of dog farts? To get rid of dog farts by a vacuum cleaner. And a good carpet cleaner. All right. And this uh, question may or may not be related. Um, hopefully it's not. Mary Kay, uh, for all the kids out there, where do babies come from? Babies come from dads who love their wives or girlfriends and also sometimes their parents. Oh my gosh, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is instant expert. Thank you for the wonderful minds from Fred, Jenny, and Mary Kay. And thank you everyone who put a question uh, in the comments on Facebook. Uh, Bill and Blake, go ahead and come back. This sounds like a good time for me to push uh, uh, both our Facebook page. If you're not already a fan of us on here, make sure you like it. You'll get a notification every time we go live. Uh, apart from going live, which we do these shows every fourth Thursday of the month, we also have been posting little short mini-sodes, which is just a three or four minute game of us doing like a scenes from a hat, a world's worst, a dating game, a championship, something like that, where you don't uh, need to spend a full hour watching us. You can just pull it up anytime you want on Facebook or YouTube. So I'd also suggest subscribing to our YouTube channel to get all of those. Uh, and you can use the comment sections in there to write what you'd like to see us do next time. You can write suggestions. Um, if you think you're funnier than us, you can go ahead and write what you would have said as a joke uh, in there. Someone in the comments did that earlier. And if I can find it, I'll uh, say it again. Um, Mary Kay and Jenny, you can actually kill your cameras for a moment. Fred, if you could grab your mask, we're going to do a game we call Masterpiece Theater. Fred and I are going to cover our mouths with our masks. And Bill is going to do all of the audio for me. And Blake is going to do all of the audio uh, voiceover for Fred. <clears throat> and just to get us started, I'm going to see if there's anyone I haven't taken a suggestion from. Um, uh, uh, Fred and I are going to be running through water sprinklers. Um, running through water sprinklers and playing croquet. So 
So let me get this on real quick. And Bill and Blake, whenever you want. <laughs> oh my gosh, the water feels so terrific on my bald noggin. This is a very fun Thursday. I'm enjoying the company of your presence. Yeah, me too. I don't know who thought of first doing the croquet and uh, sprinkler party that's become an annual tradition, but I'm glad they did. Me too. But I have to be careful. Oh dear, I crushed the croquet ball. Drop my super strength. Oh my gosh, what did you do? You're gonna replace that, aren't you? My dad's gonna be so mad at you. Of course I will watch this. Watch my powers of materialization. Oh, Venmo! There it is. Yes, yes, out of thin air, I love it. That's also the biggest croquet ball I've ever seen. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. That's like a croquet planet, holy crap. How did you know I'm from the planet croquet? Who told oh, you? You are? Yes! I've always wanted to meet someone from the planet Croquet. You think we can go there? You think? You think? High five! Oh, oh, no, nope. huh? you, you can't. Okay. Absolutely not. And no one can know that I am from the planet Croquet. No one. Or You're will... mortal rivals with the planet Frisbee, right? Wait, wait, what are you doing? I'm doing my wiggly finger magic. You should feel a slight tickling sensation. <laughs> stop, stop. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, I'll only got, stop right? if you promise not to tell anyone that I'm from the planet Croquet. Okay, okay I won't tell a soul. Oh, stop. All right. Now let's run through the sprinkler some more. Sounds like a plan. Follow me. Whoops, I slipped. Oh, no. I, know. I will use my powers of levitation to lift you up. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I, I got it. Hey, I got hey, it. stop oh. doing the wave, stop doing the wave. Oh, almost got it, there we go, there we go. Oh, jeez, I was about to tell everyone you were from Croquet. Why, why must you tell everyone? Hey, this, I, this is leverage. I have leverage over you now. That's how this works. Uh, yes, but I will tickle you again and again and again. Oh, 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 okay, 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 you win, you win, you win. Excellent. I'm on mute. Let's end it there. Whew. It's the most workout I've ever had in a Zoom meeting. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Blake. Good job, Fred. Uh, let's bring uh, Mary Kay and Jenny back here. Uh, you know what? I got to push this real quick. Uh, do you notice this nice jester's mask and how well it goes with my jester's shirt? Uh, Blake, let's see your chest real quick. Oh, he's got the cup too. Uh, these are all actually on sale right now at tpublic.com from our uh, designer, Zach Attack Design. So make sure, uh, uh, and by on sale right now, I mean for the next like three hours and 12 minutes it's until midnight. So if you uh, want your own jester shirt, cup, uh, we got mask, uh, watches. No, we don't have watches, totes. Um, you can go on there and get them right now. And all the proceeds goes to a, a local artist in Zach Attack Design. Whew. I'm really embarrassed how out of wind I am from running through that fake sprinkler. It was all the tickling, boy. It was all the tickling. All the tickling. All it's, hmm. You know, surprisingly, it's been a long time since my 40-year-old body has been tickled like that. <laughs> and uh, let's play one of our favorite games right now. Let's tell some jokes. Uh, let's tell some 185s, which, of course, in jesters, that goes 185 blanks walk into a bar. Bartender says, I'm sorry, I don't serve blanks here. And then the blanks say a punchline. All right, you guys uh, uh, in the chat are going to give us the blanks. The five jesters and myself are going to give you the punchlines. So the first one is 185. 
uh, volleyball referees. 185 volleyball referees walk into a bar and the bartender says, I'm sorry, I'm not going to serve, right? I'm not going to give you a drink. And the volleyball referees say, why not? And he says, because I've already served you. 185 volleyball referees walk into a bar and the bartender says, I, I can't serve you. And they're like, why not? And it's like, because last time all your drinks were spiked. 185 uh, volleyball referees walk into a bar. Bartender says, we don't serve volleyball referees here. And the referees say, well, we'll just go through the side out door. 185 volleyball referees walk into a bar and the bartender says, we don't serve volleyball referees. Can you dig it? All right, let's do 185 food taste testers. 185 food taste testers walked into the bar. Bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve you food taste testers here. Get out. And the 185 food taste testers left the bar and unfortunately on the street they were assaulted. 185 food taste testers walk into a bar and the bartender says, name your poison. 185 food taste testers walk into a bar. Bartender says, we don't serve food taste testers here. Uh, food taste testers say, all right, all right, bud. Food taste testers walk into the bar. The bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve food taste testers here. And they, we, they say, well, that's fine. You don't have to be bitter about it. And 100, 185 food taste testers walk into a bar. And the bartender says, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. And the food taste testers look around and they go, what is this, a gag? <laughs> 185 uh food taste testers walk into a neighboring kingdom and uh, the knights at the neighboring kingdom say you are not allowed to stay here and the 185 taste testers say all right fine i guess we'll go back to our royal palate <coughs> we got there blake we got all five of you in so we all know that you guys excel at this so we're going to do this for the championship that's right we're going to do this elimination style for that belt right back there so the winner of this wins the Digital Jesters Championship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the suggestion from the people in the comments. I'm going to set the joke up, and then I'm going to uh, point or call one of these jesters out, and they have to finish the joke. If they finish it well, they get to stay. If they finish it poorly, I'm going to eliminate them. Jesters, are you ready? Ready. All right, good. I heard one person. I am just scrolling back through. Let's do 185 percussionist. 185 percussionist walk into the bar. And the bartender says, I'm sorry, I don't serve percussionist here. And the percussionist say, Fred. Fine, you don't have to hit me over the head with a mallet. And the percussionist say, Jenny. Well, that really puts a snare in my evening. And the 185 percussionists say, Mary Kay. You are bongo. And the 185 percussionists say, Blake. Is it because we're such status symbols? And the 185 percussionists say, Bill. Go oh, get off your high hat. That is something a percussionist wears when they're like in a marching band. So I will give that to you. Everyone stays through the first round. Congratulations. Uh, 185 uh, from Annie, 185 shoe salesmen, sales people, sell, sellers. So 185 shoe salesmen walk into the bar. Bartender says, I'm sorry, I don't serve shoe salesmen here. And the shoe salesmen say, Bill. We left our tongues outside. And the 185 shoe salesmen say, Blake. Is it because this is a singles bar and we're married with children? <laughs> 185 shoe salesmen say, Mary Kay. You don't want to be on the wrong side of my stiletto. That's scary. So Mary Kay is going to stay. You know what, Bill? I'm going to go back to you. The tongue thing kind of worked, kind of didn't. I'm going to eliminate you this round. Sorry, man. 
185 uh, uh, dancers. 185 dancers walk into the bar. Bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve dancers here. And Fred, the dancers say? Well, your critique is on point. And the dancers say, Jenny? Plie. And the dancers say, Blake? Can we just have some chips and salsa? And the dancers say, Mary Kay? Oh, come on. What do you have on tap? <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to let all four of you stay with that one. And we're going to do 185 vegetable farmers walk into the bar. And the bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve vegetable farmers here. And the vegetable farmers say, Jenny. What's really the root of the issue, though? And the 185 vegetable sellers say, Fred. Oh, we're thirsty and you don't care at all. And the 185 veggie uh, farmers say, Mary Kay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and Blake, the 185 vegetable farmers say, Is it cause we're just a bunch of country pumpkins? Dang it, dang it you guys. All right, I'm gonna get one of you out this time. 185 ear, nose and throat doctors walk into the bar. Bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't sell, serve ear, nose, and throat doctors. And the ear, nose, and throat doctors say, Fred. Slim. I'm going to make one of them beat you, Fred. But if the next person tells even the slightest actual pun, you are out. And the 185 ear, nose, and throat doctors say, Blake. And uh, nuts. Ah, sorry, Fred. Blake topped you with that one. You're out. We're done to Blake, Mary Kay, and Jenny on here. And we are going to do uh, botanist. 185 botanists walk into the bar. And the bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve botanists here. And the botanists say, Jenny. Well, I just am blooming with affection for you. And the 185 botanists say, Mary Kay. This does not have a very nice bouquet. And the 185 botanists say, Blake. I have no idea because Mary Kay oh. took mine. Blake oh. has no idea. Blake is out, which means we're down to Mary Kay and we're down to Jenny for the championship round. And in the championship round, I set up the joke, I call on one of you. And then you two just go back and forth with punchlines until one of you doesn't have one, repeats one, or says like just noise. Uh, but I gotta, I gotta look through this real quick and find one that is worthy of you two going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth forever. Uh, let's do uh, 185 cats walk into the bar and the bartender says i'm sorry we don't serve cats here and the cats say mary Kay." perfect and the cats say uh i didn't read that clause on the door and the cats say well we're just gonna cover this place up and the cats say well, uh, where am I going to throw my trash? I don't want to litter. And the cats say? We thought we heard a can opener. Do you have a can opener? That is literally what a cat would say if it could talk, but I don't know if that's a joke. So Jenny, I'm going to make you beat Mary Kay with a good one. 185 cats walk into the bar. And the bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve cats here. And Jenny, the cats say? Well, I guess I'll then go and then. Is that a type of cat? It's a, a Bengal cat. That is a cat. Jenny, mm -hmm. you are 185 <laughs> Jester's comedy improv champion. Mary Kay, please kill your camera real quick so Jenny can get her appropriate uh, uh, moment in the sun with the digital oh. championship belt. Sorry, I'm trying, oh, I'm trying. There we go. She doesn't know what she does. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny, 
is tonight's digital jester's champion improv. Give her a round of applause. She gets the belt up on the screen. Uh, she gets a poorly photoshopped photo of herself that's going to go up on Jester's Comedy Improv at some point. Uh, uh, if you want to see that poorly photoshopped photo, follow us on Facebook. It'll be on Instagram. It'll probably be on Twitter as well. Um, I don't think we do Snapchat or TikTok because the president is getting rid of at least one of those. So, Jenny, congratulations. How do you feel as Jester's Comedy Improv digital champion tonight? I feel perfect. Ah, there we go. There's one more cat joke for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our show. Everyone else can come back here now. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining us digitally, socially distanced here. Uh, please make sure you do follow us on all the social media sites so you can find out either when our next show is or when you can actually come see us again live in person. We miss you guys. Uh, we miss Torg Brewery. Uh, speaking of that, we perform at Torg Brewery, or at least we had the fourth Thursday of every month. Uh, since then, we have worked with them. They've been a sponsor of ours to make sure we are on here every fourth Thursday. Uh, but this is actually our one year anniversary of working with Torg Brewery. So I've got my uh, Randy Paramore back here and I actually poured myself a little party glass uh, uh, at the beginning of the show because I do want to uh, have everyone raise their glass and say, hey, Torg Brewery, thank you guys very much for being a sponsor. Thank you for initially inviting us to come be a part of your world. And uh, here's to another several years with uh, Jesters and Torg Brewery. So, hey, cheers. Cheers, Torg. Cheers, Torg. Ah, no, it's good. Mm. I wonder if that's the first light up cup from Chuck E. Cheese that anyone's ever chugged a beer out of. Probably not. <laughs> Sorry, my son's correcting me. It wasn't from Chuck E. Cheese. It was actually from uh, Cheapskate, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it was from Cheapskate Nanoka. Um, we're going to do one last game. And since Jenny won that last game, her and I are going to do uh, um, a slideshow. We're going to narrate a slideshow of, uh, uh, I asked the, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, I didn't ask. Rebecca, one of our tech people in the chat, asked for the most touristy trap place you've ever been to. And this is one of my actual favorite places I've been to. Um, we're going to go with Bruce's suggestion. We're going to take you all on a slideshow of Jenny and Mide's trip to Epcot at Disney World. So if everyone wants to kill their cameras, except for me and Jenny, Jenny, do you remember a couple of years ago when we went down to Orlando, Florida? I do. It was super fun. It was really, what? really hot that week. It really was. When we got off the plane, we both just started sweating. And I don't know why, but I had one of the uh, airline people take a picture of us. Mm. But let's take a look at that. Click. Yeah, you see, I was, uh, I was so hot, I wore my my sun dress, um, but the sun was just so intense that I had to put it all the way over my head because I was- Yeah, you, you pulled the dress up over your head and I wanted to tell you that's really inappropriate, but it was so hot, you didn't care. Mm -hmm. uh, I offered to pour some of my Orlando orange juice fresh, uh, freshly squeezed over you, but you didn't want that. So I just poured it directly into my face. Mm -hmm. And you were sticky for the rest of the day. I was, and that was not a good place, Florida, to be sticky because a lot of stuff got stuck in my beard there. Uh, uh, let's take a look at that. Click. <laughs> See, it was it was so great when you uh, walked outside of the airport with that sticky beard, and you know it was kind of a drought that year that all of a sudden just rabbits started flying from everywhere and they attached yourself to your face. You got super quiet there. Yeah, the bus ride to uh, Epcot, Disney goes all out. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, we were on that bus with some weird people. There was the Cher impersonator with her pink hair. She, you know, yep. really good. Yeah, I thought it was Cher. Yeah. Uh, there was the guy who, this was before social distancing and just would not get out of your face. No, uh, I, I remember that guy. I, I, you know, I gave him an entire pack of gum and he didn't take the hint. <laughs> And then there were the two people who uh, uh, were big fans of Jester's. And it was really annoying because they followed us everywhere. I mean, I've always wanted to be a celebrity, but uh, these two really made me second guess that. It, it was very strange because, you know, I've never seen these people in my life. And then all of a sudden they just appeared out of nowhere. Right. They, uh, I don't know how, but they, uh, uh, we had to share a room with them. Uh, uh, Disney said that they were out of rooms. Uh, so we had to share a room with those two. And the bed setup was kind of weird when we uh, checked into the uh, hotel there. Click. So it was a little bit unnerving when, uh, you know, I walked into the hotel room and there's, and there's, you know, the, the maid, presumably, cleaning the room or doing whatever they do, but um, walking out a second door, where does that door go? I, you know, we never really found that out, but we definitely heard noises coming from that door the whole time. Yes, that was that was really unsettling. Um, and you know, instead of a clock, you know how most places have an alarm clock. They had actually one of those old timey cuckoo clocks, but instead of a little cuckoo bird, it was an owl that would pop out and wake you up. It was crazy. Yeah, it would pop out like every fifteen minutes. We got no sleep that week. No, that was that was too often. What? we got to go to the parks and I always thought Epcot was like a uh, science-y dirty place but it was actually a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Quick. I learned about pigs and that door from our room was there. I think we found the other side of the door in Epcot. It was in one of those rides. That's right. It took us right to uh, uh, um, the, the frozen ride where you sit in the boat and then you uh, ride through Norway. We took a lot of pictures of that. Let's just go through a bunch of those real quick. Click. Well, there was the clown tunnel and that one was a little terrifying to me. Uh, but, you know, it was it was cute. And there was the Olaf exhibit. Everyone loves the Olaf exhibit. No, not a one. The moose from that movie. Click. Do you remember then, when your shoe? I did. I lost my shoe and we uh, uh, spent the rest of the, the afternoon finding it. And uh, uh, it was finally on um, one of the dwarf's faces. Mm-hmm. It probably flew off on one of the rides that we were on. Yeah, Sneezy was not happy though. No, uh, neither was Sleepy. No, Sneezy and Sleepy both came after us. I actually got a picture of them uh, chasing us into the Epcot, the giant golf ball thing. Mm. Click. Yep. That's exactly what it looked like when he was running after us. It was terrifying. Yep. We at least uh, at least were able to run back through that mysterious door that connects to our hotel room. I'm glad that door never left our side. Right. And then there was a cute little surprise waiting for us from the Disney maid staff in our room when we ran back through there. Click.
I've always wanted a pet otter and I was so happy that you got me one. I just, that was the best part of the trip. And it was so, it was so sweet of you to get me a stuffed Dale and uh, for the maid to wait there and wait for her to see our uh, uh, expressions. She did never uh, end up leaving the room though. That was kind of creepy. Yeah, just like the guy that slept in the other night. And that guy that came back through the door. You know what? Epcot was just creepy now that I remember. It was, it's a weird place. It is. Hey, that was Jenny and Mai's trip to Epcot, everyone. Come on back. Thank you, Rebecca and Steve, our tech folks who have worked so hard to make this show a success, jumping in there. Thanks to my little guy, Edison, jumping on there. Sorry about the technical sound uh, issues I was having on my side. Jenny, thanks for taking care of that, though, and talking where there was silence where there shouldn't have been. Um, let me say thanks to our sponsors again real quick, Torg Brewery, uh, Zach Attack Design. Make sure you buy those masks, those shirts, uh, those cups of Jester's Comedy Improv through there. Uh, if you liked what you saw, drop us a couple bucks, coffee.com. Again, some of that money will go, I should say more than some of that money. That sounds really bad. Most of that money will go to a uh, local food shelf. So you're helping out a lot of people here. Um, and make sure you like us on Facebook, subscribe on uh, YouTube, uh, uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. You'll find out every time we're gonna do one of these fun things. Um, everyone, alphabetically, let's say goodbye, starting with Bill. Bye. 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 And again, my name's Wooly. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Thank you for helping out in the chat. Thank you to uh, uh, Rebecca and Steve. You know what? They do this weekly on Wednesdays from Fantastic Voyage. So make sure you like Fantastic Voyage Improv on uh, uh, Facebook as well. They do this every Wednesday at seven o'clock and chances are you'll see like half of us on there as well because we love each other that much. Uh, and when you got a chance, make sure you stop at Torn Brewery pick up a growler, a crawler, a can. They've got it all to uh, uh, go away. I'm doing a lot of pitch stuff right now. I think I'm going to take over for the late Billy Mays. What do you guys say? Go ahead. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Bye. 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 Steve might tell us when we're done, otherwise.